Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about amplifiers. I do have a playlist on the different types of amplifiers. We're going to be talking about a type of a Class A amplifier today called the Common Emitter Amplifier. And it'll be using a single transistor, an NPN transistor. So let's start by simply talking about the functioning of the transistor. So this is our standard NPN transistor. This is the collector, the emitter, and the base. So if we send the collector to VCC and the emitter through some type of load to ground, and then we input a signal on the base. What will happen is the signal will cause a change, a linear change between VCC and ground. It's pretty simple. Assuming that we have everything set up correctly. Because the transistor does not have to operate in the linear region. It can also operate in the saturation region, in which case it's either on or it's off. So to set it up to operate in the linear region, we have to do what's called biasing. To set up our amplifier to operate in the linear region, we need to find what's called its Q point or its quiescent point. When we can bias a transistor so that its Q point is near the middle of its operating range, then it's said to be operating as a Class A op amplifier, which is what we want. The Class A amplifier amplifies, if we're talking AC, throughout the entire 360 degrees of the sine wave. So then the question is, how do we figure out where we're going to go with this? There are different ways to do it, but basically we need to set a DC bias level, also called the no input signal level, to correctly set our Q point. We want its collector current to be a constant steady value, and we don't want anything to change as the signal is applied, or without a signal applied to the base. So what we need to do is we need to set the values of our supply voltage and the value of biasing resistors that are connected. Probably the easiest way to do this is with what we call the self-bias. And to do that, we simply take our transistor and we put a resistor here and another resistor here both up to VCC and then of course we go to ground there. This is called a fixed bias circuit and it's the simplest way to do it but it's far from the best way to do it and that's what I want to talk about what I consider to be the best way. What we're talking about here what I consider to be the best way is what's called a voltage divider transistor biasing. So to do that, oh, pretty music. We start again with our NPN transistor. And we have a collector resistor. We have an emitter resistor. And we have a voltage divider set up here on our base. So if we think about this some more, what we end up with here, we'll just call this VCC and these go to ground. This is our VN. We call this RB1, RB2, 
RC and RE. Resistor collector, resistor emitter, resistor base one and resistor base two. And by setting these points here, remember we just talked about voltage dividers. By setting these points here, we are able to set the bias point of this amplifier. What we use for these resistors is entirely dependent on what transistor we're using for our amplifier. And to figure that out, we need to look at the data sheet. So we're just going to talk in generalities here. But we can figure out that our collector voltage is equal to VCC minus RC times IC. And our emitter voltage is equal to IE times RE. Okay, you with me still? And our base voltage is equal to VBE plus VE. All right, we have those calculations, then we can figure out how we want to do it. So let's set up a practical common emitter amplifier. Again, we're going to start with our transistor. And in this case, we're going to use the 2N2222. You can use whatever you want. I'm just picking the 2N2222 because it's easy and they are widely available. So we're going to start with RE. And in this case, RE is going to be 220 ohms. Now, RE is one of the most important points of our circuit because it prevents what's called thermal runaway in the amplifier. BJTs have a thing where the hotter they get, the more they conduct, the more they conduct, the hotter they get. It's a vicious circle. So we need to limit that amount of gain, and we can do that with RE. Now, I said this was going to be a common emitter. So this is our ground point here, and RE is going to go directly to ground. Now, one thing we're going to want to do is decouple the DC out of that circuit if we're going to be dealing with an AC signal. So we're going to throw in a capacitor here. Uh, one nanofarad should do it, no problem. Up is our collector biasing resistor and in this case we're going to use 1.2k all right and that's going to go up to our vcc which in this case we'll call 12 volts and we will take our output in between the collector and RC. So this will be our output here, and we're also going to decouple that. Again, one nano will do it. So now we have the output of our circuit. Now let's talk about the input of our circuit, which will be on the base. So we already said we're going to do a voltage divider bias here. And we'll use something like 20K, and a 3, what we got, 3.8, 3.6. One of those two will do it somewhere in that area. That will give us 
a nice bias. And then we're going to decouple on our input as well. So what we have here now is a common emitter amplifier. Our signal in will go between here and our signal out will go between here. The pros and the cons of this circuit. It is a class A amplifier so it is the least efficient of all the amplifiers but it is a linear amplifier. There will be no distortion as long as you stay within the linear range of the transistor. The plus side of it is by doing this fixed bias on the base we can control the the transistor's beta its amplification and keep it very stable and you know that's an excellent thing because we don't want it jumping all over the place figure out our bias voltage which we'll call v sub little b as vcc times R B2 over R B1 plus R B2. That will give us our bias voltage. And now we can also find out our beta value for this amplifier with another simple formula. And it is delta IC over delta IB. That is the change in the collector current over the chain. I'm sorry, did I write that wrong? Yeah, that's B. Duh. The change in the collector current over the change in the base current. I think that's enough to try and digest at this point. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Still not feeling great. Um, if you want to go into this more and have me build up this circuit for us to take a look at let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and hey don't forget to subscribe big thanks for watching big thanks to all the patrons that's it i am out peace